Part three, how do I ask my parents these important questions and what do I even ask them? Hey there, my name is Ron Payne. I'm the CEO and managing partner here at Apple Payne Law in Kernersville. I focus on estate planning and probate. And today I wanted to give you part three, and this is the last part of questions to ask your parents about estate planning so that you can get these important questions. If you're like, I know I need to discuss it, but I don't know where to start. Now, as I've said in the other videos, this is available as a downloadable guide on our website at applepainlaw.com. You go over to the resources tab, and then the, I think there's a downloadable resources menu, and then you'll see after death guide. It's a downloadable document. You know, We'll email it to you, and you can use this however you see fit. It's completely editable, so that way you can do whatever you need to to help make sure your parents are equipped and you have the information you need. We also include this in our state planning documents when we prepare this for our clients. So with that, this is the final part of the series and the next questions. So before, just a quick recap what we've discussed, you know, do you have a will? Where is it? Who's the named executor? Who's the backup executor? And then who's your attorney? In part two, the questions we were asking were, do you have a safe deposit box? Where do you bank? Where do you have bank accounts? Are they online, in person, etc.? And then where do you keep your other important papers? In this part three, the first question you need to ask is, do you have life insurance or investment policies? Um, it's so important that you, you don't want to have saved up, paid off these policies, especially if it's whole life, because they have investment value, and then the family not even know that you had, had them, and that money never gets claimed. You know, that usually tends to be a sizable amount of money. Sometimes it's just enough to cover the funeral bills, but it pays out quick. And it's really helpful for the family to know that, hey, something's going to happen to us all. And we, we don't want it to happen soon. But if something happens to mom, mom, and pop, Paul, or me, mom, and mom, mom, or whoever in the family, you know, that you can rest assured that the funeral arrangements, if they're not already planned, are at least taken care of financially. So if there's life insurance policies, where are they? How much are they for? If you you don't have to give them that much information. Just let them know the name of the company and a phone number to call, and they can take it from there. That way you're not having to share too many details up front, right? Um, the next questions um, is, who do you want me to notify, mom and dad, when you pass? Like, I know I need to notify my siblings and you know immediate family, but is there anybody else that maybe is really close to you um, old longtime friend from high school that maybe I don't know that you want me to make sure that they find out you've passed away. Just who do I need to notify? You know, when you're in the middle of funeral planning and grieving, you're not going to remember to notify everybody. So having a list of who needs to be notified just makes it really easy. Uh, and that way, you know, while you're working through the grief process yourself, you kind of have a, a head start on who needs to be called. And then speaking of, the last thing you want to ask your parents are, what are your funeral arrangements? Have you already set them up? Because if you've already paid for it, we should take advantage of that. We certainly wouldn't want to pay for it twice. And secondly, what are those wishes? Now, a lot of times with the state planning documents, I tell my clients, look, you don't have to share all of your wishes with the whole family. It's not their business, and frankly, you might change your mind. I do think it's important to let the family know and to ask your parents, what do you want when you pass away? You know, do you want to be kept alive on a machine? Most people say no, but you don't want to assume that that is or is not the answer. Where do you want to be buried? Do you want to be buried? Do you want to be cremated? Do you want to be hydro cremated? Do you, you know, do you want to be buried in a casket? Do you want a certain kind of casket, et cetera, et cetera. It's good to share those wishes with your kids. If you're a kid, it's good to ask these parents. It's not a fun question, and I know that, and I know it's hard. But at the end of the day, everybody really wants to make sure they're honoring their wishes. And if different children have different stories, um, it's really hard for everybody to be sure about the same page. And then we already get off during a very emotionally difficult time on the wrong foot with each other. Because now you told me one thing, but they say they know another and we don't trust each other and we're already at each other. And it's, you know, and that's not what any of us want. So, you know, put down for your children or ask your parents what do you want? Um, what are your wishes? Do you, what kind of service do you want? Is there music that you want to pick, etc.? Or do you just want to bake a simple service? Do you want no service? How do you want to be buried, etc.?
I hope this has been helpful. We do offer free estate planning and probate consults at Apple Payne Law, and you can reach us on the web at applepainlaw.com. You can give us a call for a consult. We'll do telephone, we'll do in person, we'll do Zoom, whatever works best for you and your family. Be reached on the phone at 336-281-6928. I hope this three-part series has been helpful to you. Like and subscribe here on YouTube for more helpful, friendly, legal content. And until next time, stay safe out there and have a great day.